announcements before Mass this week. Um, so this coming weekend is the Burger Bash, Saturday, June 20th. If you have a sign, please put it out in your yard uh, starting on Monday. Um, Operation Safe Mode t-shirts are available. Um, if you had ordered them, you can pick them up in the parish office. Please call Sharon in the office. If there are there are also some extras, if you would like if you would like one, call Sharon. They are ten dollars each. Good evening. Welcome as we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ. The worship aid can be found in the bulletin. In your prayers, please remember Michelle Ruby. Please stand.
Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have blessed us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. O oh, live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember for 40 years now the Lord, your God, has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Praise
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How will this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. Of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike the ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you. Jesus himself said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. 
Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give you is my flesh for the life of the world. Jesus knew that saying this will confuse and upset his disciples. We can notice their reactions and disbelief. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? It's almost like saying, this is pure stupidity. But the Lord did not concede. In fact, he said it again with a stronger emphasis. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Jesus meant it, and he would finally reveal how is this going to happen at the Last Supper. He would finally reveal at the Last Supper the first celebration of the sacred mass in the upper room with his disciples the night before his bloody sacrifice on the cross. And he gave the Eucharist to us to be celebrated for all generations in remembrance of him. But why would Jesus leave us this memorial? Well, because it accomplishes his plan to make his presence ever felt. But most importantly, because God knows we need Him so badly. We need His presence. In the story of the road to Emmaus, the two disciples pleaded, Stay with us, Lord, for it is almost evening. This was their insistent invitation, and in reality, this expresses the inherent desire of our human soul. We want to remain in the presence of God, to be united with Him. And the Lord never fails to take heed of this our longing. He only comes, He not only comes to us, but also stays with us through the Eucharist. God continues to be incarnated, living with us, enshrined in the tabernacle, tangible and held by our hands at the Holy Communion. We want His presence always felt in a manner that we human beings naturally want to perceive things. He appears to us in the form of the Blessed Sacrament, which we behold, we adore, and we worship. Among the many forms and appearances, the Lord chose to appear to us as bread and wine. Bread or food is the basic necessity to survive. Without food, we eventually die. But among others, the flesh and blood of Jesus is totally different and unique. He is the only food that the Lord cannot produce. He is the bread that came down from heaven and takes us back to heaven. Takes us to heaven. The food of this world can only sustain us to a certain point of time. But the bread from heaven takes us to eternity. And why the wine? The Jewish culture prohibits eating blood for no other reason but, as stated in Deuteronomy 12, verses 23 and 24, only be certain that you do not eat the blood, for the blood is life. Hence, eating the blood is tantamount to eating life. And Jesus wants to tell us that by drinking his life-giving blood, we will be cleansed and forgiven of our sins, and we will be saved from the curse of death. Furthermore, the wine reminds us of the fullness of joy in the eternal wedding feast of the Lamb. And so if we receive His body and blood, we will live. We will truly and fully live. How wonderful, how lovely. Let us thank and adore God. His goodness stands firm forever. St. Augustine said, No one eats this flesh unless he first adores it. May this, our celebration today, bring us closer to the Eucharist and grow in us an ever-deepening devotion to this remembrance of love. And finally, let us be reminded that whenever we receive the real presence of Christ in the Holy Communion, we are Christified. As it is said, we become what we eat. We participate 
in the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Let us therefore become Christ to others, loving and life-giving. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the Lord and the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of life, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. We gather now all our prayers before the Father who is found of all blessings. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, as we celebrate the solemnity of the most holy body and blood of Christ, we will grow in a spirit of thankfulness for the gift of the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. For Reverend Mark Dunmire, who was ordained a priest for the Diocese of Greensburg on June 13th, may he be blessed in his ministry as he fulfills the Lord's demand to feed God's people with the bread of life. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. And that we may be united in faith and spirit in working to uphold the dignity of every human life, born and unborn, under our one Lord, Jesus Christ the King. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that Jesus, who is our life and salvation, will raise them up to the eternal life of heaven. We pray to the Lord. O God, our Father, whose great love made manifest in your Son, Jesus, who came down as bread from heaven. Look kindly in our pleading and grant the deepest longings of our heart. You search the whole of our being and you know what is best for us. Grant our prayers through Christ the Lord. Amen. Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
through the divine work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Grant the church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery, in the offerings we hear present. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Last Supper with His Apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, He offered Himself to you as unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by the bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out without end, we are dead. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the 
his death and resurrection, we ask you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
May the blood of Christ keep you safe. Prayer to make a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually in my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is celebrated. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God.